Buckle up, Buttercup, because today we're about to embark on a whirlwind recap of Heaven Official's Blessing. Whether you're a seasoned fan desperate for a refresher before Season 2, or a curious newcomer wanting to know what all the fuss is about, this video is your one-stop shop for all things TCF. Today we will unravel the epic tale of Si Lian, the banished god with a heart of gold, and Hua Chang, the mysterious ghost king with a devotion bordering on obsession. We'll laugh, we'll cry, we'll swoon over their undeniable chemistry, and most importantly, we'll make sure you're fully prepped to face the emotional roller coaster that awaits in our season 2 recap. So, grab your Danby essentials, hit that subscribe button and get ready to ascend to new heights of fangirling or fanboy. The story begins with a bride being carried in a sedan through Yujun Mountain at night until there's sudden turmoil. The bride is anxious and notices a hand reaching in, thinking someone would help her, but she's attacked shortly after. In Xi Lian's third ascension, he discusses the destruction he caused in the heavenly capital with Ling Wen. They use the spiritual communication array for assistance after Xi Lian is tasked with investigating the missing brides of Yujun Mountain. Si Lian encounters his former servant Mu King and bodyguard Feng Sen. While visiting a tea house on his way to Yujun Mountain, He Lian gets distracted by a silver butterfly. Nan Feng and Fu Yell volunteer to help him investigate the missing brides. They discuss the case before noticing villagers carrying a sedan. Xiao Ying warns of a decoy bride, but it turns out to be a doll. When the leader assaults Xiao Ying, Si Lian intervenes. Si Lian, Fu Yao, and Nan Feng take shelter in Feng Xin's temple. Fu Yao shares the legend of Feng Xin as the god of male fertility. Nan Feng and Fu Yao bicker about Mu King's past role as Si Lian's assistant, prompting a fight. Si Lian intervenes and they devise a plan to disguise him as a bride to lure out the ghost bridegroom. Xiao Ying assists with Xi Lian's makeup. As Nan Feng and Fu Yao escort Xi Lian Sigan, they are ambushed by wolves and base slaves. Si Lian instructs them to leave him behind. Suddenly, Hua Cheng offers his hand through the sit-in curtain. Si Lian accepts in flashbacks of their past unfold as they walk together through the forest. Si Lian and Hua Cheng walk through the forest. When Hua Cheng tries to lift Si Lian's veil, he sends out Rui to attack, causing Hua Cheng to dissolve into silver butterflies. They arrive at an abandoned Mingguan temple, where Si Lian discovers the 17 missing brides, all deceased. Hearing the ghost bridegroom approach, Si Lian hides among the brides. When the ghost bridegroom inspects them, Si Lian attempts to attack, but the figure escapes as black fog. Si Lian follows the fog and meets a group outside, including Nan Feng and Fu Yao. They check for the ghost bridegroom among them, but find nothing. The group drags out Xiao Ying, who followed secretly. Despite Si Lian's warning, they enter the temple, intending to take the brides and collect the reward. As they unveil a beautiful bride, the youngster begins touching her. Xiao Ying tries to intervene, but is pushed away. The youngster is struck by a stone, and they pursue a shadow that flees into the forest. They discover corpses hung in the forest, raining blood, attributed to Kai Rong, a near-devastation ghost. Si Lian mentions being led by a man through the forest, causing concern from Fu Yao and Nan Feng, as they suspect it's Hua Cheng. A man brings out Lang Ying, mistaken for the ghost bridegroom, but Xiao Ying clarifies he's just a boy she found. Si Lian knocks out the youngster, and Nan Feng deals with his gang. Returning to the temple, they find 18 veils instead of 17. Suddenly, the brides being carried down the mountain come to life. Si Lian and Nan Feng realize the ghost bridegroom is a vicious bride, not a groom. The villagers seek shelter in the Ming Wang temple courtyard as the dead brides come to life. Si Lian tries to distract them with Ruo, but more villagers arrive, leading to further attacks. Si Lian creates a protection circle with Rui to save the villagers. As Xi Lian fights the brides, he contacts Ling Wen through spiritual communication to inquire about Pai Ming's obsessive lover, Xuan Ji. Ling Wen confirms her existence. Xuan Ji emerges from the temple, upset over Pi Ming's absence. She kills the youngster and attacks Xi Lian, prompting Xiao Ying's intervention. Xiao Ying is injured, and Xi Lian vows to care for Lang Ying before she dies. Zhuan Ji attacks Xi Lian again, but before they clash, golden light pierces the clouds, and Pai Xiu and military officials arrive. They arrest Zhuan Ji and seal her under a mountain. Pai Xiu thanks Xi Lian and begins to explain the story of Zhuan Ji and Pai Ming. During a flashback to the Yushi, Huli War, Zhuan Ji attempts suicide after being captured, but Pai Ming intervenes. 
They agree to a temporary relationship, but Suan Ji becomes possessive, even breaking her own legs to manipulate Pai Ming into staying. Despite his care, Pai Ming never marries her, and she ultimately commits suicide to hurt him. After the flashback ends, Pei Stu leaves as they take away Xuan Ji. Si Lian and Nan Feng later reunite with Fu Yao, while Xuan Jian palace officials clean up the bodies in the forest. They go bury Xiao Ying together with Lan Ying when Xi Lian notices that he is still bleeding. Lan Ying takes off his bandages and it turns out he is infected with the human face disease. Xi Lian discovers Lan Ying has the human face disease, but he flees before Xi Lian can inquire further. Xi Lian instructs Fu Yao and Nan Feng to inform Ling Wen to track Lan Ying down. At Ling Wen's temple, she suggests they converse more in the spiritual communication array. They learn from Feng Xin that Xuan Ji should be taken away from his palace, but Pai Xu explains she would worsen if taken to Pi Ming's palace. The heavenly officials inform Si Lian about the four great calamities and how Hua Cheng defeated 33 martial and civil gods, leading to their demotion and obscurity. Most heavenly officials leave the array after they decide to find out what the ghosts are planning, but Xi Lian calls out to Feng Xin and Mu King to thank them for sending their deputy generals, leaving them stunned. Later, Ling Wen tells Xi Lian his debt has been cleared. In return, he tells her that he has decided to go to the mortal realm and build a temple for himself. In Puki village he finds an abandoned old hut where he settles down. A few villagers come visit and ask what god is being worshipped there, never having heard of the crown prince of Xiamel before. Xi Lian goes into the village to collect scraps throughout the day. While walking home, he notices an ox cart and gets on to ride with it. As he rents through the scrolls, another person on the cart suddenly speaks to him. Xi Lian and the young man talk a bit about gods before Xi Lian asks him if he knows anything about Hua Cheng. Si Lian and the young man San Lang converse further. San Lang is intrigued by the title Crimson Rain Sought Flower, leading to an explanation of how Hua Cheng earned it. Si Lian learns about Hua Cheng's appearance and the fact that he gouged out his right eye. San Lang reveals a ghost's weakness is their ashes. They introduce themselves before a clan of hooded ghosts approach. Si Lian quickly erects a barrier with Rui, rendering them invisible. As the night of the ghost festival unfolds, Xi Lian knocks out the ox cart driver to maintain secrecy. The ghost, puzzled by the block path, move on after a brief moment. Xi Lian drives the cart away, but San Lang notices a bandage around his neck. Before Xi Lian can explain, the ghosts notice them and give chase. Xi Lian tries to use a fortune shaker to guide their path, but keeps getting bad luck sticks. When San Lang takes a turn, they finally get good luck sticks, but still end up facing the ghosts. Despite Xi Lian's attempts at conversation, it's San Lang's glare that makes the ghosts retreat. As they head to Pupi Village, Xi Lian offers to read San Lang's palm to check if he's a ghost, but finds no clear signs. They reach Pupi Shrine, and Xi Lian invites San Lang to stay the night, to which he agrees. They wake up the ox cart driver before entering the shrine. While setting up their shared bed, San Lang suggests painting a missing god's portrait the next day which pleases Xi Lian. San Lang's repeated stares at Xi Lian's bandaged neck and ankle unsettle him, but they eventually go to sleep, with San Lang appearing troubled. The following morning, Xi Lian finds a painting of the crown prince already hanging above the altar, surprising him. He praises San Lang for the artwork and offers to style his hair, using the opportunity to check for any ghostly signs. They spend the day cleaning the temple until the ox cart driver arrives with villagers. They pray in gratitude for Xi Lian's help the previous night. Suddenly, another group arrives with an old man in desperate need of aid. A diseased man wakes up in Poopy Shrine, distressed. He escaped from Ben Yu Pass, where many vanish. Xi Lian realizes he's not human and grabs him. The man's arm deflates, and he crumbles when San Lang impales his ankle. Xi Lian and San Lang examine the puppet. Xi Lian tries to consult the heavens, but the Wind Master's return distracts them. They ignore Ben Yu. Ling Wen advises Si Lian to stay out of it. While cleaning, San Lang talks about the former state preceptor of Banyu. Fu Yao and Nan Feng return to accompany Xi Lian. They interrogate San Lang, enraged by his teasing. Si Lian calms them, and Nan Feng starts drawing the distance shortening array. Thanks to the spell, they reach a small town at night and continue through the desert until the next day. Xi Lian offers his hat to San Lang to shield from the heat, but San Lang refuses and returns it watching Xi Lian's face as he ties the straps. They find an abandoned house to rest in. Fu Yao and Nan Feng investigate San Lang's identity, 
Fu Yao offers form revealing water, but it doesn't work. Nan Feng tries Hong Jing, but it breaks without revealing anything as San Lang pulls it from the sheath. Si Lian spots two female figures running from the window, suspecting one to be Ban Yu's state preceptor, they decide to follow. A sandstorm hits, causing them to lose the runners. They reunite, but an argument ensues about the wind's strength. Suddenly, Yi Lian gets blown away. In the chaos, Rui grabs San Lang instead of something solid. Rui grabs San Lang and pulls him into the sandstorm along with Si Lian. Si Lian binds them together and sends Rui out again, but it accidentally grabs Nan Feng and Fu Yao too. After a few tries, they land safely in the cave. They explore the cave, speculating about the two women. Si Lian thinks the woman in Teal might be Ban Yu's state preceptor. Deeper in the cave, they find a group of merchants seeking shelter. San Lang asks why they're traveling in such dangerous territory. One of the merchants explains they have a local guide, Ad Zhao, who knows the region well. Later, San Lang discovers that the stone tablet Si Lian sits on has inscriptions. Si Lian, with his knowledge of Ban Yunis, deciphers it as a tombstone for a Yan in general. This general was repeatedly demoted for trying to stop conflicts between Yanin and Ban Yu soldiers, ultimately dying on the battlefield. Suddenly, a merchant spots a scorpion snake, which is not only poisonous but also controllable by the state preceptor. They light up the cave and realize it's filled with snakes. Nan Feng and Fu Yao fight them off while the group rushes outside. Uncle Jang gets stung and passes out from the venom. He has about four hours to live, but Nan Feng has a pill to extend his life to 24 hours. The antidote, Shan Yu Fern, is only found in the kingdom. Zi Lian notices a scorpion snake attacking San Lang and grabs it, getting stung in the process. San Lang cauterizes Si Lian's wound and sucks out the poison. Si Lian, San Lang, and Nan Feng plan to retrieve the Shan Yu Fern while Fu Yao stays with the merchants. They take A Zile as a guide and head through the desert. Upon reaching their destination after sunset, they hide when they see others approaching. The two women in return, looking for Xi Lian and the others. The woman in black stops near the building where Xi Lian and San Lang are hiding. Trapped in hiding, Nan Feng causes an explosion to distract the woman in black. After a brief fight, Nan Feng leads the women away. Xi Lian, San Lang, and A Zhao head to the palace to find the Shen Yu Fern. Suddenly, they spot Tian Sheng and a few others who follow them. San Lang finds the fern and heals Xi Lian's hand with it. Excited, they split up to search for more. Then, they hear a scream. A man's face emerges from the mud, revealing he was buried as fertilizer for the fern. Despite Xi Lian's warnings, a merchant rushes forward and is killed by the man's tongue. The man gleefully remarks on the taste of the traveler. The commotion alerts the Banyu soldiers and a general, who arrive to take the group hostage. This causes the man in the mud to go ballistic, baiting the general to let him go home. The general flings his mace, unearthing what's left of the man's body, the remnants of a skeleton. The general, named Kimo, leads them to the sinner's pit. The general orders Azal and Tian Sheng to be thrown into the pit, but suddenly Azal charges forward to fight Kimo, only to be tossed back and down the sinner's pit. Si Lian tries to appease the general before he can take Tian Sheng, speaking in Banyu tongue. This only incenses him further though, as Kimo finds out that Xi Lian is from the Central Plains. Just as Fi Lian decides to jump in first, he spots Stan Lang, standing silently at the edge of the pit before he willingly lets himself fall inside. Soundless words emit from San Lang's mouth as he falls, Xi Lian only shocked at San Lang's actions. Xi Lian attempts to jump into the sinner's pit after San Lang, but Kimo stops him, using Rui. Xi Lian tries to pull the general down, but Kimo proves too strong. Suddenly, the person above the pit frees themselves and throws the Banyu soldiers into the pit. Taking advantage of the distraction, Si Lian pulls Kimo down. As they fall, he tries to climb back up with Roy, but encounters an invisible barrier. Someone catches him. It's San Lang, but he seems different. Si Lian asks to be let down, but San Lang refuses, citing the dirty ground. Si Lian notices San Lang lacks a heartbeat and doesn't breathe. Kimo discovers his soldiers dead and attacks, but San Lang defeats him while still holding Si Lian. Si Lian asks if San Lang killed them, and he confirms, getting scolded for rash actions. San Lang wonders if Si Lian is more interested in his non-human nature. But Si Lian emphasizes their compatibility matters more than identities. Yi e Lian slaps Kimo with Roy, keeping him subdued. San Lang places Si Lian on cleaner ground and returns to his previous form, slightly taller, surprising Si Lian. They interrogate Kimo, 
who initially resists but talks when promised help in killing the Imperial Preceptor and threatened with the treatment of his soldiers' bodies according to Banyu burial customs. The Imperial Preceptor, of mixed Banyu and Yongan heritage, faced hardship early on with her father leaving and her mother's subsequent death. Bullied for her delicate nature, she disappeared during the war and returned with knowledge of Yongan's dark arts. Despite her ability to control scorpion snakes, few trusted her. Kimo advocated for her and she proved herself by saving soldiers during the storm. But when Yongan attacked, she betrayed her people by opening the city gates. Kimo trusted her, but now he screams for her punishment. Si Lian tries to calm Kimo, but Sam Lang silences him. The girl they discuss jumps into the pit. Si Lian tries to calm Kimo and confirms that the Imperial Preceptor was indeed hanged over the sinner's pit. Kimo admits to repeatedly hanging her whenever he caught her, citing her vengeful ghost attacks on his soldiers. He had to feed his soldiers by tossing merchants into the pit. Si Lian questions how the half buried face ended up in the palace, and Kimo explains it was to fertilize the Shen Yu ferns to ward off the snakes. Suddenly, the Imperial Preceptor jumps into the pit. Realizing her soldiers are free from the cycle, she asks who did it. Si Lian explains he's a heavenly official and San Lang is his friend, and it was an accident. The Imperial Preceptor removes the magical formation and allows them to leave the sinner's pit. Fu Yo calls them up, but Xi si Lin insists he comes down to see the situation. He lights up the pit, revealing lifeless soldiers. After jumping down and assuring Xi si Lin of a protection circle for the merchants, Himo loses control and brutally attacks the Imperial Preceptor. Xi si Lin intervenes and stops Kimo's assault. The Imperial Preceptor recognizes Xi si Lin as General Hua, and Fu Yo knocks Kimo unconscious, realizing Si Lian is the general of the tombstone. Si Lian explains he ended up in the desert 200 years ago and was mistakenly recruited by soldiers. He reveals that his alias Huaxi is fake and recounts meeting Ban Yu while cooking one day. Si Lian helps Ban Yu vomit out the poison and shares his last snack with her to ease her hunger. She starts following him everywhere and learns singing and wrestling from him, along with her only friend, a Yongin boy. During the riot, Si Lian has to play dead and wakes up in Yonin Kingdom, having saved Ban Yu from being trampled. Fu Yao questions Ban Yu about opening the gates and any accomplices. Yi Lian asks why she sent the snakes to bite people. Ban Yu claims they disobeyed her, denying intent to harm. Fu Yao doesn't believe her and handcuffs the ghosts. Si Lian asks Ban Yu to summon a snake, but it explodes midway. More snakes appear, overwhelming Ban Yu's attempts to control them. Si Lian tries to escape with Roy, but it returns. More snakes fall into the sinner's pit, shocking everyone. Si Lian, San Lang, Fu Yao, Ban Yu, and Kimo are trapped in the sinner's pit as hundreds of snakes fall from above. Fu Yao accuses Ban Yu of lying since the snakes aren't attacking her, only San Lang. He shields Si Lian and himself with a crimson umbrella, unable to create more fire due to suppression. Si Lian defends San Lang, suspecting another person in the cave. Suddenly, Ban Yu is kidnapped. Si Lian rushes to her with San Lang's umbrella. A dangerous sword appears, but San Lang protects Si Lian and gives him the umbrella before facing the sixth person in the darkness. Rui grows anxious, but Si Lian soothes it while calling out for Ban Yu. Fu Yao angrily accuses Ban Yu of being the culprit and associates her with traitors like Zhuang Ji. Si Lian realizes the sixth person is Pai Xu, who is disguised as Ai Zhao. After San Lang defeats Pai Xu, Fu Yao's mana returns. Kimo tries to attack Pai Xu, but Fu Yao stops him. Si Lian recognizes Pai Xu as Ban Yu's childhood friend. Ban Yu confesses that Pai Xu saved her multiple times from Ban Yu bullies, and she was never forced to open the gates. She apologizes before passing out. Caught by San Lang, Kimo and Pai Xu argue with Kimo expressing no regret for Ban Yu. A female voice interrupts, accusing Pai Xu of killing innocent merchants. They are suddenly pulled up by the wind, revealing Nan Feng with a beaten face. The woman in teal is the windmaster, who scolds Pai Xu and apologizes to Xi Lian. She assures Xi Lian that Ban Yu won't be scapegoated. The woman in black takes Kimo and Pai Xu for punishment. Pai Xu recalls the hardships of fighting for Ban Yu and finding Ban Yu tied above the sinner's pit. Nan Feng warns Si Lian to stay out of the matter after reporting Jun Wu, as it offended General Pi. San Lang reassures Si Lian that Pai Ming wouldn't resort to dirty tricks and gives him a jar to transfer Ban Yu. 
they return to Tian Shang's group, heal his infected uncle, and bid farewell to the merchants. Si Lian invites Nan Feng for dinner, but he declines, citing duties from his general. Si Lian then asks Hua Cheng what he'd like to eat, noticing he used his real name. San Lang reminds him to use his alias. 